It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Brian Hoyer. Hi, welcome to another Dice Tower iOS game review. My name is Brian Hoyer, and this week we're going to be taking a look at a classic, Carcassonne, on the iPad. Now, reviewing a classic game is kind of a tricky prospect because there's some diehard fans and there are also some haters out there, but uh, I'll do my best here. How does this classic board game translate to this touchscreen interface? Well, let's take a look at the iPad and find out. So here's the title screen for Carcassonne, and if you notice, there's no background music. A little bit odd, but as, as you'll see in a second, the production values are through the roof on this thing. You have your basic settings options down here. Now there are two modes of play. You've got Solitaire, and they have a Game of the Week that they update, which is kind of cool. Or you can play as a, a random town. And then there's the normal game. You can do a new game or you can join a game in progress. So we'll do a new game. So as you can see, I've started a new local game. Now the cool thing is it keeps track of recent players and you can actually pull people in straight from uh, your, your address book or your contacts. So you can actually have everyone's photo up here here. And it's kind of nice how it integrates your iPhone and iPad apps and everything would could kind of come together into one nice package. And you can see you can also play against computer opponents from easy, strong, computer weird, different play styles, computer evil. And it's kind of cool to have those options in a mix up play. Uh, so right now I've got myself, a man named Bob, and a servant. But since Bob's not here, I just click edit. And it's very simple. I click the minus sign next to his name. Delete. Okay, so I'll, I'll just play against the computer. You click start when you're ready. And as you can see, this is basically a tile laying game. There are 69 tiles remaining, and when you play a tile, you have to make sure that it matches up. See that center one, that's the starting tile, and if you notice, he played uh, so that his town matched up. You have to play a town at the top. If I play a card over here off to the right, I have to make sure that the roads match up and that it's a field. Down here would just have to be green, there's no road. You get the idea. Now the nice thing is, it actually uh, shows you everywhere that you can play by having that dark square outline. So I can play this in a number of places, but I'll connect roads right here. And then you can always rotate it. And it'll rotate it so that it's still playable. I couldn't do the road up and down, for instance, because my road has to match up with the end of that road. Now besides just tile laying, the other thing you can do is, you notice he put a little purple person in his city up there. So I'm blue, I click on him, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people to place. I'm going to place him, and again it shows an outline of where the people can, I can play him up in the field up there, the field down here, or I can place him on the road. See, so you score by placing them on a road or something. Once that road is completed, you own that road since you're on it. He can't play another person on this road where I'm at right now. When you're done with your turn, you just click the check mark, and it goes to the next player. As you can see, he just scored points because he connected and finished a road connecting two items on there. You can finish a town by laying town tiles where there's a wall around the entire outside of the town, by completing roads, etc. Again, it's basically a tile laying and a meeple laying game at its core. So I'll play another tile here. We'll just do another quick hand. Um, this tile that I have to play can go in any of these dark spots because I can match up the green here. I don't have a road, I can't match it up there. However, I do have a town too, so I can play it off of the town there or there. I'm going to drag it here. It automatically rotates it, which makes it really nice and simple. And I'm going to put one of my meeples up in the field up here, which is the only place it can be played at the moment. To end my turn, I'd click the check mark. I can undo my turn, but I'll finish it up right there. And gameplay continues on in this manner. So, that was admittedly a very fast walkthrough or playthrough of the game, just to kind of give you a taste of what's it look like. Um, but really, if you're on theboardgamegeek.com, or you're watching on uh, the Dice Tower, then chances are you already know Carcassonne, and you don't need to know how to play it. I don't need to teach you. You want to know, did it port well to the iPad? Well, it did. And um, there are a few expansions available, too, which is nice to know. They've actually released, I believe, inns and cathedrals and rivers at the moment. Now, it's not like the tabletop version where there's expansions upon expansions upon expansions, but they are releasing ex expansions for it. And as for the game itself, it looks really nice. There are good graphics. There's some good voiceover and narration to walk you through if you've never played it before. 
And of course, there are a lot of um, different ways to play. You've got that weekly challenge. You can play it solitaire. You can lay it out tabletop style and gather around, play with your buddies. And if they're not around, you can play solo against the computer and throw in a whole bunch of computer components, opponents, or just one like I did. So there are many ways to play it. And like I said, they did a good job of porting it over. Now, when it comes to reviewing it, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because it's Carcassonne. It's been around for years and won a lot of awards. You know it. And you probably know if you like it or not. So having said that, if you love Carcassonne, then you need to get it. Right? It's one of your favorite games, a must buy. If you enjoyed Carcassonne but you haven't bought it yet, kind of on the fence, you like it but, or maybe you just played it for the first time at a buddy's house and you want to know more about it, then you can buy this too. It'll save you a little bit of money, it's less expensive, and you don't have to worry about all the pieces and the setup. This is pretty much the complete package. The full game is right here on your iPad, which is pretty cool. However, if you do not like this game, this will not be the version to change your mind. You're still going to hate it. As for me personally, I liked it. I think they did a good job. It's at a good price point, and I'm going to say it's a solid one thumbs up. It's Euro style, and I do like European games. It's just a little too light for me, um, and it's just a little tedious. Lay tile, lay tile, lay tile. And it's fun in short spurts, or if you can spread out the games, you know, play every once in a while. This is Brian Hoyer saying one thumbs up for Carcassonne, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.